my love. I am so happy and so pleased to announce that this episode is brought to you by my very own company, Savage Chocolates, which is all about cultivating a more loving relationship to your body and to food. You know, we don't really believe in guilty pleasure. We just believe in pleasure done well. Right? Have you ever had that uh, candy bar or a thing of ice cream and you eat it and you're like, wait, I don't, I don't remember eating that. <laughs> wait, where'd that go? <laughs> well, that's why I created Savage Chocolates because I know the importance of pleasure. And I think that we don't slow down enough to actually experience it. And so... If you are wanting to eat mindfully, if you are wanting to be reminded of how to actually experience your pleasure, then please go to www.savagelosangeles.com to order your goods. All right, you guys, let's get to it. Maya, can you talk to us a little bit about who you are and what you love and how you show up in the world? Well, hi, first of all, thank you so much for having me. And um, who am I? That's a really good question. Um, I was born and raised in Geneva, Switzerland. And I feel like that's um, a big part of who I am, just being an immigrant and, you know, I don't want to say fighting my way through to be in this country, but that's a big part of of me and and just my determination and, you know, um, I guess I would say my ambitious side to follow my dreams and and not look back in a way. Um, so yeah, that's I would say that that's a big part of me. And now I'm out here, um, you know, in in California and pursuing my dreams. And also at the same time, you know, six months ago, about six months ago, I met the love of my life and my whole life turned around and got engaged. And, and yes, as I was saying, you know, six months ago, I was completely single, um, had, you know, my loft in Hollywood for the last 11 years, but in Hollywood for the last 12 years. And, um, yeah, I, I sort of, um, really put my attention and focus towards my career as most of us do. I feel in Hollywood, cause it's just the land of, of following your success or career or all of that. So we kind of put family and love life sort of to the side, you know? Completely. And especially someone like you who has been so successful as well. You know, I I know, I know a number of, no offense, everyone, but I know a number of people in the, in the performing arts in Hollywood that are like, yeah, I'm an actor, but like, quote unquote, I'm I'm a server, (laughs) like, you know, like, and aren't really doing it. Like you've really been doing it and working and, and consistently putting yourself out there and auditioning and being in the world and making you know, series is and all the series is, I don't know if that's a word. Series, series, plural. Um, But I mean, you've been really doing it. So of course that's kind of hasn't, that hasn't really been the focus for you. No. And, And at the same time, it's so funny because growing up, I still remember this idea that like, of course at 25, I will get married 27. I will have my two kids. And, you know, I think, especially in Switzerland, people get married very young. And that is the sole focus is you, you get married, you have children and your career is just a way of, you know, surviving. And and you're basically living for your vacations with your kids, but it's not the main focus. And I had it completely reversed where I want to do what I love every single day of my life. And, you know, hopefully I'll meet a man, but, you know, and I thought it would come easy. I had this notion that like, of course I'll be married at 25. That mon- that man, that perfect man will just show up and, you know, no baggage, nothing. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> of course, but man, you know, life has a beautiful way of unfolding itself perfectly so that you can learn all the things that you need to learn. And, and I know that you also, before we 
before we continue down that road, like I know that you are an incredibly devotional person, which is like part of my love for you is how grounded you are in your own practices mm-hmm. and how intentional you are. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about some of the things that you do daily to cultivate a meaningful life, which allows you to show up so wholeheartedly? Yeah, of course. I think a big part of my life has been the switch that I had about now eight or nine years ago. Um, And I started practicing gratitude every day for on average 30 minutes. And every morning I wake up and write a list of 10 things that I'm grateful for and why. And it all started with the book, The Magic by Rhonda Byrne. I don't know if you've ever done it. I actually haven't. And uh, but I haven't. Yeah, it, it's it's pretty incredible, and it's um, a practice of 28 days in gratitude. And just to let you know, I'm going to start my 63rd round of 28 days. Wow! So <laughs> it's intense, but I I tell people that I that I do podcasts with um, that. A lot of it is due to me having OCD. I had severe OCD growing up. And so I sort of transformed my OCD where it was all about checking and rituals and things that serve no purpose to, you know, following that alignment into something good, just making that sort of disease or illness um, into something wonderful and positive. And so now it's just, it's just kind of, my saving grace, my go-to, and and I really enjoy it. And it's changed my life completely. And a gift that you're now giving to us, which is the best part. Um, Because that's, I mean, not the best part, but it's one of the most beautiful parts of it. Because I, I really, I relate and I understand, you know, I suffered with eating disorders for most of my life. And it's like that energy doesn't just disappear. Like you don't just like let that go. Like the energy has to be redirected. Like there's a reason that that energy is happening. Um, and for me, it was like, okay, well, I, I'm putting so much energy in checking out. So now I put so much energy into checking in, which is why I'm a yoga and meditation teacher. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. you're out there. I just want to <laughs> not plug an angel. You're an angel, but that's it. You know, it's like, we, we have to, we have to like put it into something, um, something more purposeful. And you've done that. And do you think that potentially this practice of celebrating what's working, what's happening for you, um, maybe helped with this partnership helped align in that way? hundred percent. I think it's a combination of multiple things, but I just really believe in timing and I believe that you attract who you are. You know, I, I look back on, on my past relationships and I know that, and I don't have this quite formulated, but I know that I I've dated, you know, someone that was maybe a little shady or a little not fully in integrity. And that was a time where I wasn't in full integrity. I dated someone that was, you know, very unreliable and distant and insecure. And that was the time where I was the most insecure in my life. And so I think just becoming your best self is goals into attracting just someone that will be their best self too. And and that will mesh into something beautiful. Cause otherwise, of course, you know, you'll follow yourself around wherever you go. You're not going anywhere. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So Yeah. So good. Okay. So can you tell me a little bit about, okay. So let me just preface this by like, for those of you who are listening, I don't know, three years from now, like, it's 2020. It's a pandemic. It is chaos. And (laughs) I know for me personally, like the thought of meeting somebody during a pandemic, it seems kind of like absurd. I was talking to my friend Kate about it recently, who actually has also been on the podcast. She's an incredible musician. And she was saying, it's like, okay, we like went on a date, but like, I can't touch him until like, I know that potentially we're like doing this together because (laughs) I don't know who else he's touched. I don't like, it's a weird moment. So like, 
talk to me about the lead up. Like, give me spare no details. Give me the lead up of where you were before you met Todd. And then what that transition was. And then we'll take it from there. So before I met Todd, I was in full lockdown. It was the beginning of the pandemic. I mean, full quarantine. Um, definitely the most single I've ever been. I just said goodbye to all the lingering, you know, people in my life. All the random, how are you texts? You yes. Mean, hey, I, how's it going? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I, I just cut that off. And um, it's funny, the universe will test you. Like even just a few, bef- uh, a few days before meeting Todd, like an ex came back and was like, hey, how's it going? And I was like, no, I deserve better. I believe that there's better out there for me. And if there's not, then I would rather be single than settle for less than I deserve. And, um, so it was really, it it was, it was a cool challenge. I I believe that, you know, God or whatever you believe in really does test you. It's like, are you sure you don't want to stick to what you know? Are you sure you don't, you know? Oh yeah. Oh, they can smell it. It's so funny. All the guys, I have had that same exact experience where I'm like just now getting into something with someone and all of a sudden like three exes will reach out. And I'm like, whoa. And I've also been the one to reach out like unknowing, unbeknownst to me. I had a guy that I used to date that rekindled something with his ex during quarantine. And like three days before they got together, I was like, Hey, I'm really thinking of you. Like, wow. And and then I found out they got back together. I was like, I was that one person. That person. Yeah. Yeah. We never think about how we may have been that person for someone else. I don't think about it, but you know, it's probably very true. Yeah. Real. Um, so yeah, so that, that was all going on and, and I don't know, there was something in me that, that just knew that it was coming. I had done, um, a second round of calling in the one, I don't know if anyone's done it out there, yes. but yeah. And, um, I reconnected my faith in Jesus and started going to church again from the beginning of the year. And, um, very liberal kind of church. I just, might I add, um, oh, that's you know, beautiful. I love yeah, it. Um, just, just, it's just wonderful what it can do in terms of just like living a, a good, healthy centered life. If it's the right church, just putting it out there. Yeah. But, um, so yeah, so that was all going on. And, um, Todd showed up on my, um, on my dating app yeah. and, I had just started kind of looking again. Um, I had taken a while off of dating, which was, I think the best thing I could have done. And it's funny, he showed up on my dating app and I was like, definitely not my guy. Just because he has this long, these, you know, long hair, beard and rugby man. And I was like, that's not it. Not my husband, but sure. I'll, I'll, you know, consider it. And, you know, and we, talked for a little bit, but he immediately FaceTimed me. Wait, what? That's an urban. Yeah. He didn't text or any, he, and, and I thought like, that's ballsy. Like that. <laughs> Cause I don't know if I would have answered. <laughs> and, and I know. So I, I think I didn't, but then I was like, Oh, I'll call you back. I probably like put on, you know, it's quarantine. I was probably like no makeup, dirty hair. Naked. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so I, but I was still very natural. I remember I FaceTimed him back. I was like, Hey, and he was just very sweet and normal and just very like, Hey, I was like, Hey, um, (laughs) I think 10 days or two weeks straight every day. And he was super consistent. And I thought, wow, that's unexpected. Yeah. And then we both decided since we had both been quarantining, it's being super careful. Like let's, give it a shot. Let's meet up. So we met up and I don't know. It was, it was one of those dates that never, never ended. It just, yeah. And I knew we knew that first day we were like, okay, I guess we're off the app now we're done. Um, and I texted actually a couple of my friends and I said, I'm, I met my husband. You texted me that. <laughs> you were, well, there you go. 100%. You were like, I think that I like, we're like talking about like rings and shit. <laughs> you were like, you were like, I don't understand what just happened. Yeah. It was, it was so quick. And he, he even said, he was like, I'm just going to have to say goodbye to a few girls in my life. Um, but like, he was like, I'm all in. And, and I think he initiated that. And I thought, wow. 
And that's the feeling that I think if you're out there and, you know, you feel like it's never going to happen to you, that was me. I really, as much as I wanted it to happen and I did all the work, I had to come to a place where if it never happens for me, then that's okay. That's okay. So from that place of surrender, you... Yeah, I finally, I did all the work and then I really, because sometimes you're like, oh, I've let go and and it's not really heart-centered. You're not really feeling it. But I really felt like for the first time in my life, I thought if it doesn't happen for me, it doesn't happen for me, you know? Totally. Isn't that so wild? And it's so funny because, um, you know, we put so much, at least for me and like in my industry and the wellness world, I see it so often. Like we put so much emphasis on like, Oh, if I'm pretty enough, I'll have the right partner. If I'm smart enough, I'll have the right partner. It's like, it has nothing to do with any of that. Like, look, like you guys, I I know that this is a podcast, but like Maya is truly one of the most remarkably stunning women I've ever seen in my life. Um, But like to think of you being like, Oh, it doesn't happen for me. It doesn't happen for me. Like, as far as society goes, like people are, I'm sure you've heard it before. I've heard it too, where it's like, Oh, like it'll happen. Like you're so beautiful. Everyone, like everyone wants to be with you. You know, it's like, it's not how it works. It's not how it works. And, you know, I think in this generation or as time goes on, we become a lot more picky about who we want. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing because I think you want to be picky if you're going to spend the rest of your life with this person. But I think, you know, we also have this vision of what it's supposed to look like and how wild it is that I never thought that my husband would look like Todd. (laughs) So much better. Like he's the most beautiful man I've ever seen in my life. And it's so much more than just appearance. And, and the biggest Google. Oh. The beauty of now doing a podcast in my house is things oh. like this happen. So savages, just wait a second. I gotta open the door. He's so sweet. Pumpkin. Oh, oh honey. Be free. <laughs> so sweet. I actually, yeah, Winston's out there, our dog. So so right. cute. What did we do before dogs? The best. What did we do before them? I don't even know. Anyway, what were you saying? What was I saying? I think, oh, so another the most beautiful man, you were like, he, yes, he is. And I think <laughs> that's what I mean. He is the most beautiful man, but I think it, it encompasses like just person, everything, personality, energy. And I know that for me, I've, I've always had a list of the man that I want to attract and I had to become this person. I think so many of us, we write lists that are, not even close to where we're at in our lives. You know, I I want the most generous man. I want the man that is going to be stable, reliable. And I had to look at myself and be like, am I all these things? (laughs) Am I reliable? Am I someone that's going to be loyal and faithful? And, you know, so I really had to become my own list. And I think that's finally when I met this incredible human that fit all those characteristics, but it took me really checking myself. Isn't it this, uh, I will never forget. I had a, I had a teacher once have make that list. I made it. And then she was like, okay, so now circle the things that aren't you circle the things that you don't embody. And she's like, cool. Now those are the things that you need to work on. It's so huge. Yeah. It's so real. It's so true because for the longest time I was really good at attracting unavailable people. And I was, it was always like, kind of kept me in this like very victim-y stance. Like, Oh, I just attract the like fuck boys. Like I attract these people. <laughs> like, no girl, like you are unavailable. Like if you're choosing that, you were that. Yeah. Yeah. It's so true. And, and yeah, just, you want to be your best self when you meet that person. And even now the work has just begun now that I am in a relationship. I didn't think that I was like, Oh, once you're done, you're done. You just think you're in it. Yeah. And, and you're in it and everything, there's not going to be any more work to do. It's all over. Like it's great, but it's, it's the opposite. It, I think that's when all the work begins because all of a sudden you have someone mirroring you and 
right? You know, showing you all the things that you still do need to work on. And, and it's amazing. I mean, it's great when you have a partner that's willing to communicate through things and, and yeah, continue to grow. Can you, can you talk to me a little bit like truth time about some of the things that he's mirroring to you right now? And some of the things that you're look that you're looking at, some of the things he's mirroring for you. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, I think um, I generally have had. I, I'm going to talk in the past. I've had low self esteem and low self worth, mm-hmm. and so Same. really working for me, it's it's working on knowing that I'm worthy of love, knowing that I I just always think I'm going to be replaceable and left behind and abandoned. And that's my thing. That's something that I, you know, have struggled with. And and Todd, luckily, is just the most steadiest rock there is. He's never threatened to leave. He's always there. He's, and, and that's why it's a perfect, my perfect person to work on this with, you know? And before that I was with, not, you know, uh, it's been, it's been a while, but, um, my last relationship, the, the man broke up with me three times in a row over the span of the year. So, so to have that steadiness is just, I'm, I'm like, is this real? Like, is this really happening? Like, you're not leaving me if I do this. What about if I do that? What if I, you know, and he's just constantly like, I'm here, I'm there. I'm not going anywhere ever. And it's yeah he is steady like a rock too he's also like the tallest like steadiest (laughs) I mean you guys if you haven't seen Maya's Instagram there's a post where he literally like picks her up and (laughs) throws her over his head and then she tries to do it for him and it doesn't work out as well but no he yeah he's he's a beast he's a total best way yeah so good so so good and I, that's the thing I've never been with really tall strong men that's also new yeah. for me yeah. yeah and and it I think that goes with just mirroring also how I want to see myself as strong and steady and you know and that's that's the work for me and and I'm getting there I'm absolutely I'm there. absolutely and yeah. and I know women like, like you and I, we have that tendency when we're so like career focused and, and kind of like, um, aggressive in many ways, in many aspects of our lives. Do you find that there is, a um, a softening in, in melting into this relationship? Like, are you finding that like, cause for, for me, my kind of, my perception of like the balance of the masculine and the feminine, like, I feel like he's a very like archetypal masculine like how has that kind of shifted you or not shifted you I have no idea it it definitely has and it's it's a challenge for me too because I also don't want to soften too much that I lose my drive and I find myself sometimes just you know being this little like girly girl and, and, you know, counting on him for everything. Cause he's, he is, he's so good at everything. That's almost infuriating. He's the best at everything. And I'm just like, Oh, you're so amazing. And I, I, that's something that I'm working on with my life coach is to really also stick with my path and my own life and my own career and dreams. Cause I did come to this country to, pursue my my dreams and to have a voice and and so I definitely don't want to lose that and that's what attracted Todd to me in the first place because he really wanted someone driven and successful and you know I don't want to lose sight of that in my mind I'm I've always thought because I've dated maybe more insecure men that if I succeed and if I'm fully focused in my career then a man's going to leave me and and he's going to find someone that's more available or or you know, less focused into their careers, but Todd is a whole different breed that I've attracted. And so now just, you know, knowing that I can step into my power and he's strong, he is the most confident person I've ever met. And he's not cocky at all. He's very humble, but he's just like, when I tell him, sometimes I'll be like, you're just the best. And he's like, yeah, 
<laughs> I love it. And, and I'm like, yeah, but you, you are. And you're like, yeah. You know, it's, it's great. It's not coming from reality. It's not coming from a, you can smell it. You can like feel it. You can, when it's like, yeah, yeah. You it's know, he's not that at all. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah. yeah, he's very much like a king in his power, and and it's it's incredible. It's inspiring. Just his his confidence. And yeah, Good. And he might say differently. He might be like, "No, I'm actually insecure about this or that." But that's how I, you know, perceive him. I kind of feel like maybe we should bring him in. Yeah, <laughs> Pod, he's coming. I'm so excited. Yeah, I've only seen him via yoga sessions. Yes, that's that was yeah, come on in. Come in. Welcome to the live cast, baby. <laughs> oh, and we have our, we have our little Winston in here. Is so. the pumpkin in here too? I'm so into it. Mine's outside. He's just <laughs> snoring all over the place. Oh. So glad to see you. It's been since Down Dog, like four months ago or whatever. Down that Dog, remember? That's <laughs> right. Oh my goodness, that's correct. I love it. Well, I'm so, so grateful. We're just talking about you, so I figured maybe we should bring you in. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, I'm a bit nervous now. But <laughs> no nerves. Let's take a deep breath all together. Good things are great things that we're talking about. Oh, take deep breath. Take deep breath. <sighs> Dreamy. Well, the good news is, is you're already like, we just basically spent 32 minutes like talking you up. So, um, so we are already like loved and appreciated and adored. Um, can you, can you maybe tell us a little bit, Todd, about how Maya has shifted your life since welcoming in and since calling in this person and what you've been learning about yourself through the process? Yeah, no, I mean, it's been a huge learning curve. Um, you know, my past, I've been in sports teams and, and I played professional rugby for 15 years. So, um, and a lot of those times I was, I was a captain. So you kind of have to shield uh, a lot of your emotions or, or what's going on and, and, you know, provide leadership. And, and when, when things are tough, you, you kind of have to, you know, put on the game face or, or not to, you know, tell exactly how it is, but what the team needs to hear and individuals and, and, and read people. And if it's going to be management or coaches or all the players, and then you're doing the media. So it's a, it was a full-time job uh, for a long time and, you know, kind of curbing that uh, and then getting in a relationship with Maya, it's, you know, very deep and, and uh, it's, it's amazing. You know, I've, I've learned a lot about myself, but where I want to be. Yeah. That's huge. So it, yeah, it is. And, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm really excited for, you know, what, what the future has. And, you know, we grow daily and, and we challenge each other and, and I get more challenged than anything. And, and I enjoy, uh, enjoy evolving and, and being a better man and being a better father and being a better, you know, husband. So it's, uh, it's brilliant. So good. I love how unbelievably genuine and sincere you are and just how you show up so presently. Um, and it's so cool. A, the playfulness is so cute. I love seeing you guys. Um, but B, like speaking of, you know, what, what you've done for the last 15 years in your career, like this is just a different way of bravery. Like this is a new way of like asserting yourself. It's just, it's a softer way of doing it and like a more open way of doing it. And like how beautiful that you're letting this gorgeous human in, not to mention you do have a little girl, correct? Yes. Yeah. She's okay. nine years old. Amazing. And how beautiful though, to welcome Maya into her life. How has that transition been? Um, it's been amazing. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, Hadley, Hadley adores Maya and Maya is so good with her. And, and, you know, like I mentioned before, you know, you've made me a better father, you know, and, and it means so much to me. And I've, no, I've mentioned, but I'll never stop thanking you <laughs> because it's, it's, it's brilliant now because Hadley, she's, she's very emotional as well and sensitive. And I've never really dealt with that before, uh, Maya and, and, you know, little things, just, I just need a hug or, or little tips. 
And so some things that you've taught me for, for yourself that help you, I've, I've translated that to, to our daughter and it's been, you know, a game changer. So my relationship with my daughter has been, you know, even stronger, uh, you know, thanks to you. So it's, it's been, it's been brilliant, really great. Mm -hmm. all, that's beautiful. Second of all, it's amazing how sometimes we think like, Ooh, this is going to be scary to like welcome this person in or like, Ooh, this is going to be scary to make this transition. And I guess in some ways it is, is, but like the payoff of that like look at what's happening right now like it's so beautiful but like that's the payoff of being like I'm going to be afraid of potentially like welcoming this person into not only my life but into my child's life and yeah. like well, I mean, once once we got to know each other pretty much from the get-go I knew Maya was the one so there was no fears Wow. It was all excitement. So uh, yeah. was, that was, you know, fear was way behind. I, it was just more of, you know, the excitement and, and the reaction and, and the raw reaction and, uh, that Hadley had whenever we told her that we got engaged. Uh, she was over the moon. She's the most excited little girl ever. And, you know, I, I said, mom, I always wanted this. And I mean, they're inseparable, you know, when, when, when we have her, it's, it's unreal. I just want to say, too, that the most incredible thing for me from the get-go has been, and maybe that's his rugby, cap, captain rugby background, but he's never had any fears or doubts about me. Oh, and of course. The, the, the incredible part of having someone that's like you, I want you, and that's, you know, I've never had that. And, and that's, I, I'm someone that's very fearful and anxious and nervous. And I'm like always just thinking, what if the worst happens? And I'm trying to change that. Obviously that's why I have such a strong gratitude practice, but Todd is just that person. And, and it's just like all the men out there that are listening. If you find your girl, let her know. Yeah. No games were ever played between us. And that's just, I was ready for it. When was the last time that ever happened? No games? What? I'm shook. I don't even know what that means. No, I know. I, and I just loved it. You know, I thought, well, well, games is what keeps you attracted or keeps things sexy or whatever. But Not it, 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 this was way sexier. <laughs> of course. And that being chosen piece. Do, did you feel, I feel like for me in my life, like the, could, you referred to like, he just chose you. He was like, this is it. Like, I get it. And you felt that sort of anchoring. Like, did you find that there was a, for me, at least in my experience, I don't want to project anything onto anyone, but like, for me, I find that when I choose myself more, that's when people show up and they're like, I choose yes. you too. And it kind of sounds like before you met him, you were like, that was like, a, yes. that was almost a choosing of self. That was the first time I've ever chose myself, actually. That was the first time I, I decided, yeah, like I'm, I'm pretty great and I can hang with myself. I mean, I, before meeting Todd, the fact that Todd actually swiped yes on me on apps is beyond me because the two la latest posts was, were of me doing these silly videos for my Instagram of me playing golf by myself inside my loft and also doing like crazy accents, dressing up as a boy well, and for that post. Yeah. Being basically <laughs> a little insane. And for some reason, but I was choosing me. I was like, I don't, I don't care that much what people think because we might all die soon because we're in a global pandemic. So I'm just going to be me and crazy and kooky. And he was down for it. <laughs> There's a quote that Mark Grove says, who I love, and he says, you be you and let the world adjust. And it's like, you let the world adjust, but this world came into your world because he was like, yeah, I choose that world. <laughs> yeah. Easy choice, easy. What are you, um, I can't believe it's already been 40 minutes. Um, I'm like, oh shit. Okay, so what are you most grateful for in each other? Just one thing. Ooh, good question. Do you want to go first? Oh, you go first. <laughs> I am most grateful. Oh, there's just so many things, but I would say his heart, his, uh, there's two things. Can I pick two? Um, his heart, just, he's the kindest man I know and always has my back always. And 
I, it ties into reliability. That was my number one thing that I asked for my list. And, and he is the most reliable man I know. And he just always shows up, always picks up the phone, always texts me back. And just, I, I, I just know I can count on him. That's huge. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm so great. I've never had that in my life. Well, and especially as someone who does tend to run more anxious. Yes, I'm definitely anxiously attached. And I, I now I, I'm just not even embarrassed to say it. It's just, yeah. <laughs> 100% yeah. same, but that's exactly it. Like you found that secure. Yeah. Yeah. And then for me, I guess we always say, uh, my always says, oh, you're my rock. And I always say, you're my light. So she's, you know, shows me the, the way, you know, forward and how to be, like I explained with, with our daughter Hadley and with everything else, it's, it, you definitely showed me the light on, on a different side, uh, you know, from that transition. A lot of athletes have a hard time transitioning from being, you know, in a team environment or, you know, contracts or traveling, whatever the case may be into real, real world. And my transition has been so smooth uh, from the business side. And then obviously for the relationship, I, I just, I scored big. So I would say being the light. <laughs> I love it. Okay. One piece of advice, we'll finish on this. One piece of advice that you would give single people who are trying to put themselves out there, men and women. Todd, will you talk to the men and Maya, you'll talk to the ladies. Okay. Talk to the men. All right. Um, No, I mean, if, if you have something good in front of you, great in front of you, the best in front of you, like we said before, you know, don't have any games because once you, once there's like a gray area, you know, then you're going to, if you have an inch, you might take two inches, you might take a mile. So anything else is not going to be, uh, you know, trustworthy or you're having your word or, or you got to be all in for it. So if you can eliminate the gray area, I think it's, uh, it's, it's, it. And, and that was one thing I think that we're so confident with our relationship is, is, we said it from, from day one, we said, Oh, yep. We're going to delete this. Yep. Don't talk anymore. Where's the boundaries? And we're learning and we, we've learned, but there has never been, you yeah. know, a, a smudge of gray. It's always been black and white. And, and, and that's the confidence, you know, that you need to have and, yeah. and the trust. Yeah. I love that. We have an open phone policy. We have an open computer, like, I never, like he can use my phone whenever he wants. I can use his phone or his computer. There's never, and that to me, like that's, that's huge. But for the women, I would say, uh, it's, it's so simple, but just love yourself first, like love yourself, you know, give yourself all that love because you're going to, you're going to need it when you meet that, that man, because it, it, it'll guide you towards someone that is right for you. Um, if you're not there yet, it's not even worth finding that person. And you've got all the time in the world. I thought, you know, I'm 34 and I, well, I was 33 when I met him, but I thought, again, I was going to meet my person at 25, but I realized if I had met my person at 25, I would be divorced three or four times by now. I just wasn't ready. And so there's, it's never too late. No matter how old you are, just you're exactly where you're supposed to be, but just nurture that love for yourself and the right man will come along. So beautiful, you guys. Thank you so, so much. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do, I'm going to do one more thing because you guys are cute and I'm not done with you yet. Um, so I'm just going to ask fire rapid fire around this or that, which one you like, and let's see how you sh- stack up. Which one we'd like? Yes. So I'm gonna t- I'm gonna say like coffee or tea, and you'll be like, which one you prefer? For myself or for him? For yourself. Okay. For yourself. And we'll go one at a time just to like see who does okay. it. Okay. Coffee or tea, Maya? Uh, coffee. Love it. Go, Todd. Coffee. Ebook or hard copy? Ebook. Hard copy. So here we go. We got a little yin and yang action here going on. Beach or mountains? Mountains. Beach. They dress up or casual, like pajama time? Casual. Casual. Cute. Um, New York or LA? LA. LA. Cute. Um, to me, vulnerability is 
To me, vulnerability is love. Uh, putting yourself out there. Love it. Right now, I am most grateful for in this moment. Right now, I am most grateful for sharing our love on this podcast. Beautiful. I'm grateful for having me on here. <laughs> and there's good ways. <laughs> good ways on the beach. She loves to surf. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Okay, you guys. Well, I love you. And love you. thank you for sharing your story and giving us the light. Oh, Winston giving us the light in this very dark time and being the steadiness so that we can be the light. So I appreciate you both. Thank you so much for having us. And we'll, we'll be back on whenever you want us yes. to be. It's so much fun. I would love it. Oh my God, that pumpkin. Bye guys. All right, you guys, thank you so much for carving out the time to listen to this wisdom, to listen to uh, all this goodness. Um, Once again, gentle reminder to please check out savagelosangeles.com to learn more about my new company that I'm so proud of. I hope it inspires you to create and cultivate a life that you dig. Um, And also, if you are down and have, you know, oh, I don't know, 10 seconds, then please, please give this podcast a five-star review on iTunes. Super easy. Just give it five stars, maybe say a few kind words. And if you dug it, please share it with your friends. I would be over the moon with gratitude. Um, All right. You guys are the bee's knees. Much love. Stay savage. Stay savage.